Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome to part 3 of my networking tutorial series. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2, make sure to check those out before you dive into this one. In today's video, we'll be adding UDP support to our client server setup so that clients can communicate with the server through both TCP and UDP. If you get stuck, there's a link to the code on GitHub in the description. If you have questions or you'd like to share your progress, come join the Discord server, we'd love to have you. There's an invite link for that down below as well. I also got a few suggestions to zoom in on the code more, so I've increased the scale in Visual Studio. Let me know in the comments if this is any better or if I need to zoom in even further in future tutorials. We'll set up the client first. In the client class, create a new class called UDP. Inside, add two fields, a UDP client called socket and an IP endpoint called endpoint. Now add a constructor, inside which we'll simply assign the endpoint, passing it the server's IP and port number. At the top of the client class, add a reference to our TCP class and assign it in the start method. Back down in the UDP class, create a new connect method which takes the local port number as a parameter. We'll be passing in the port on which the client is communicating, so it's important to note that this is different from the server's port number. Inside, we want to bind the UDP client to the local port and then call its connect method. Then call its begin receive method, passing in receive callback as the callback and null as the object state. Since this callback doesn't exist yet, we'll create it now. Inside the try block, create a local byte array and assign it the value returned by the socket.endReceive method. Then call socket.beginReceive again, passing it the same parameters as before. Before we handle data, we need to make sure that there is an actual packet to handle, so we'll check if the byte array is less than 4 in length, in which case we'll simply return out of the method. Now I do want to be transparent here. I've worked with TCP a lot more than I have with UDP, and I pieced together this whole UDP setup myself using the Microsoft Docs, various articles, and a bunch of different forum posts. I've been using it in my project, and so far it's been working great. However, the amount of testing I've actually done is relatively limited, so it may be necessary to implement further checks before handling the data. Now that I think about it, we probably shouldn't be disconnecting if this condition does actually pass, since it could be a common occurrence. As far as I'm aware, UDP won't ever split packets the way TCP does, but you can lose partial packets. That means that this if statement could pass if the first half of the packet arrives, but the other half has been lost, in which case that packet is essentially useless and we shouldn't bother handling it. Since this is something I really only realized while recording this video, I'll take another look at it and make a few improvements in a future part of the series. Unless you're really pushing this system to the limit while you're developing your game, I don't think it'll be an issue, but I wanted you guys to be aware that this could be a potential source of problems in case of high network traffic. Anyways, after the if statement, we'll call our handle data method, which we'll create next. Inside, create a new packet and pass it the bytes we received. Then read out the packet length and read the specified amount of bytes back into the data variable. This essentially just removes the first four bytes from the array, which represent the length of the packet. Next, call the thread manager's execute on main thread function inside which we'll create a new packet with the now shortened byte array. Read out the packet ID and invoke the appropriate method to handle our packet by grabbing it from our packet handler's dictionary. Above our receive callback, add a method called send data. In the try block, insert the client's ID into the packet. We do this because we'll be using this value on the server to determine who sent it. Because of the way UDP works, we can't really give each client their own UDP client instance on the server, at least not without running into issues with ports being closed. I talked about this in a bit more detail in one of my previous devlogs, and perhaps there's a way of doing it, but I wasn't able to find one. I spent several days rewriting the whole UDP code in multiple different ways trying to do just that, but I ran into issues every time. I eventually also found a few sources online saying that typically only one UDP client is used on the server. This means that all UDP communication will be handled by a single UDP client instance, and unless we include the client's ID, the server won't really have a way of determining which player sent the packet. Obviously, we'll validate the ID by checking if the endpoints match, but in order to check that, we need to know which client claims to be the sender. Next, we'll ensure that the socket isn't null before calling its begin send method, passing it the packet's bytes as the datagram, the packet's length as the number of bytes, and null as the async callback and the object state. In the catch block, we'll just debug.log any exceptions that we get. Back in the connect method, we're going to create a new packet and immediately send it. This packet's sole purpose is to initiate the connection with the server and to open up the local port so that the client can receive messages. Since the send data method writes the client's ID to the packet, we don't need to do that manually. 
Now at the end of the client handle classes welcome method, call the connect method and pass in the local port that our TCP connection is using. Finally, we'll add a send UDP data method to the client send class. Just like in the send TCP data method, call the packets write length method followed by the send data method. Just make sure you're calling the UDP class's send method and not the TCP one. Now let's add the UDP functionality to the server. Open up the server's client class and create a new class called UDP. It'll be pretty similar to the client's version. Add an IP endpoint field and an int to store the client's ID. Then create a constructor to initialize the ID. At the top of the client class, add a reference to our UDP class and initialize it in the constructor. Back in the UDP class, create a connect method which takes an IP endpoint as a parameter. Inside, assign the parameter to our endpoint field. Below, add a send data method that takes in a packet instance. Inside, call server.sendUDP data and pass it our endpoint and the packet. This method doesn't exist yet, but we'll create it in a moment. Before that though, add a handle data method which also takes in a packet instance. Read out the packet length and store it in a local variable. Then read out the number of bytes specified by the packet length into a byte array. In the call to thread manager.execute on main thread, create a new packet using the byte array. Then read out the packet ID and invoke the appropriate packet handler method from our dictionary. Now in the server class, add a private static UDP client field. I called mine UDP listener to keep things as consistent as possible with our TCP setup. This UDP client will be managing all UDP communication for the server. In the start method, initialize it with our server port. Then call its begin receive method and pass in UDP receive callback as the async callback and null as the object state. Below our TCP connect callback, create the UDP callback with an iAsync result as the parameter. In the try block, create a new IP endpoint with no specific IP address and port. Then call UDP receive and pass it our async result and the IP endpoint with the ref keyword. This method will not only return any bytes we've received, which we're storing in a byte array, but it will also set our IP endpoint to the endpoint where the data came from. Immediately afterwards, call the UDP client's begin receive method again so we don't miss any incoming data. Next, we'll check if the data is less than 4 bytes long, in which case we'll return out of the method. Much like on the client side, we may need additional checks here, so I'll be looking into that and making some changes to this in a future part of this series. Now create a new packet using our byte array that we received and read out the client ID. Before doing anything else, we'll check if the client ID is equal to 0. This should never be the case, but if it is, not checking this could cause a server crash because the code we're about to add would attempt to retrieve the client instance corresponding to an ID of 0 from our client's dictionary. Now we need to check if the sender's UDP endpoint is null. If it is, that means this is a new connection and the packet we received should just be the empty one that opens up the client's port. If this is the case, we'll call that client's connect method, passing it the endpoint, and then we'll return out of the method to avoid attempting to handle the data. Finally, we'll check if the endpoint we have stored for the client matches the endpoint where the packet came from. Without this check, a hacker could theoretically impersonate another client by simply sending a different client ID than what belongs to them. The reason we convert the endpoints to strings before comparing them is because in my tests without the string conversion, this condition returned false even when the endpoint's IP and port matched. Finally, we can handle our data. In the catch block, we'll just write any exceptions to the console. Now create a public static method called sendUDPData with an IP endpoint and a packet as its parameters. In the try block, we'll ensure that the endpoint is not null before calling the UDP client's begin send method. As you might expect by now, we'll simply write any exceptions to the console in the catch block. In the server send class, add a sendUDPData method. This should be identical to the sendTCPData method, except that we're calling the UDP instance's sendData method this time. Next, duplicate the two send TCP data to all methods and change them to work for UDP instead. That's it for UDP support. All that's left to do is to try it out. In order to test our setup, we'll quickly create a new packet. Open up the packet class and add UDP test to the server packets enum and UDP test received to the client packets enum. Then copy both enums and paste them over to the client. Back on the server, create a new method called UDP test. Inside, create a new packet with the ID we just added, write some sort of string to it, and send it using UDP. In the UDP class's connect method, call server test. This will send our test packet as soon as the UDP connection has been established. 
Over on the client side, we need to add the new packet to our packet handlers dictionary. In the client handle class, add a method to handle the packet, read out the string, and debug.log it. Then call client send.udp test received, which doesn't exist yet. Create that method in the client send class and initialize a new packet inside with the appropriate ID. Write a string of your choosing to the packet and send it. Back on the server now, we need to handle that packet, so add the packet ID and the corresponding method to the packet handlers dictionary. Create the method to handle the packet, read out the string, and write the message to the console. Finally, we're ready to test it out. Start up the server, hit play in Unity, and click the connect button. You should see the message displayed in the console on both the client and the server. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please take a moment to smash the like button as it really helps out my channel. If you got stuck at some point, check out the code on GitHub and come join us on Discord. Links are in the description. In the next part of this series, we'll be adding some super basic player movement, so subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss that or any other videos that I upload. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.